Well, here we are again, folks. We're talking about spiritual integrity today. Spiritual integrity. And that means that you are spiritually inclined. Uh, if Can you pray to the Lord Jesus Christ on a daily basis and get an answer? Or do your prayers just go into the wind? It doesn't really, in one great big sense of the word, if you're a brand new baby in the Lord, or if you ask Jesus to save you when you were 10, 12 years old, and you know that you really meant it, but you find yourself now in a life of degradation, in a life that is filled with all kinds of evil things. Can you find relief in talking to the Lord in yourself? If you can, there's a good likelihood you really meant what you said when you asked the Lord to save you. And he's dealing with your heart. And you need to get your body in subjection to what your heart is doing, excuse me. Your body needs to come around and get in subjection to what God would have you do. The uh, prayer of restoration uh, we find in uh, uh, David uh, over here in Psalms in chapter 51. In Psalms chapter 51, David said, Restore, restore in me, Lord, restore in me. And, and he says, put your tender mercies on me, Lord. Your tender, give me your tender mercy. Listen right here. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercy. Tender mercy is what we need to ask for. When we find ourselves knowing that our heart wants to serve God and that we really want to follow God, we need to ask Him first tender mercies. And then we need to be sure to do something else. We need to start picking up the Word of God on a daily basis. Daily. We need to get in every day, a proverb or uh, uh, something. We need to get started. We, we need to get started. My goodness, my friend, if you know that your gas tank is empty, you're not going to strike out on a trip without putting some gas in your car because you're not going to go very far. And I got news for you. You're not going to go anywhere for the Lord Jesus Christ if you don't have some of his word in your heart. You should be able to open this book to any page and any verse and be able to read it and be able to put together a piece of the puzzle. You should already be able to know what was before it and what is after it. And you should already know some of the story. Anywhere that you open up this book. And that way there, you'll know that your heart is right. Your heart's got to be right before God, before you can have comfort or peace in your life. So therefore, listen to what David says right here in 51. After he says, have the mercy, he said, wash me thoroughly. Wash me, Lord, thoroughly. How do you get washed today? You get washed in this old word. You get, you get washed in the word. You've got to take the word of God and put it in your heart and 
it washes you from the filth of this world and from the degradation and from the full lordness Goodness gracious is my and the forlornness of the word. The forlornness. You can be forlorn in life, even as a Christian, if you're not careful. A careful walk is a very important thing. To walk carefully in the Lord. Circumspectly, the Bible said, that's according to to what God tells you, walk that way. He said, have mercy on me. Have mercy upon me according to your loving kindness. Have mercy upon me according to many tender mercies. Oh my goodness. You know what mom and daddy had for me? They had tender mercy. Oh my God. You, have a, you talk about a young man that got in trouble when he was a young man. That was me. I got in more trouble when I was a young man. And my mom and daddy had to have tender mercy to bring me through uh, those uh, areas and places and times in my life. Cleanse me, he said, from my sin. What is sin? Anything that's not of God. But you know something? If I ask Jesus to come in my heart and save my soul, and then I'm derelict in getting in this word, then it is sin. And if I regard sin in my heart, the Lord will not hear my prayers. I can't afford to regard sin in my heart. Neither can you, my friend. If you've asked Jesus to save you, you cannot afford to regard sin in your heart. And what about if you pulled up to the service station and you pump a gallon of water in your gas tank and then you pump five gallons of gas in there? How well do you think that automobile is going to run? Until that water has dissipated or gotten through it somehow, that vehicle's not going to run good. That gas is tainted and it's not going to run good. And you're going to spit and sputter and jerk and sit on the side of the road and try to get it running and finally get it running and still have the problem. You may even have to drain the tank and start over again. Many people who name the name of the Lord need to drain their tank and start over again. Need to get the water out of the tank. Need to get the sin out of their life. Ah, uh, yes, you can ask Jesus to forgive you of your sin, come in your heart, and save your soul, and then pile sin back up. Well, what you need to do is get that sin off of a righteous soul because it'll weigh it down and make you be the most unhappy human being that ever lived. Oh, may I hide not your face from my sins, Lord, but show me those sins and blot them out for me, Lord, and cleanse me, he said, cleanse my heart and renew a right spirit in me, God. David's asking the Lord. He realizes he's in sin. And saying, Lord, cleanse me from this. Help me in it. Give me the ability to lay this thing down that's bothering me and bothering you, hindering my spiritual life. Give me the ability to put it aside and to get where you would have me to be. Cast me not away from you, God. That's what it was. I woke up with that fear this morning. God's not going to cast me away. And I know that didn't come from the Lord. That fear came from the devil. But on the other hand, it gave me the fear of the Lord too. Cast me not away, Lord. 